All right, welcome to our lesson on proofs. This has uh, some common patterns that you're going to see a bunch as you're doing these um, on your own as well. So um, let's get going. Um, you may be able to hear the crickets some outside, and I know you can uh, see the full moon behind me. It's beautiful, but don't let that distract you. All right, so here we go. Um, given um, P is a midpoint, and we have some perpendicular sides and some more information, I'm going to prove that these two triangles, N and P and HRP, are congruent, okay? To do a two-column proof, proof, we have statements on the left and reasons on the right. All right, so P is a midpoint of MR. That has specific meaning. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, these segments are perpendicular. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then, yeah, we've got MN is congruent with RH. Anytime you have a statement of congruency, um, mark it over here. It has meaning. So MN is congruent with RH. Oh, look, those are that's a side. I'm going to take note of that. That's a side of each of these triangles. All right, we're a third of the way there. Um, and that's just from the given. Now, what does it mean to be a midpoint? To be a midpoint, P, midpoint means that we have two congruent segments. MP is congruent with PR, two sides of the triangle. Um, so we now have two sides of each of the triangles that we've shown congruent. Where did this come from? Well, that's the definition of a midpoint. I'm going to keep these color-coded so you can kind of see how these things follow. So when you know that you have a midpoint, then you will have two congruent segments. Um, what does this stuff up here in the purple mean? Well, perpendicular lines mean that we have 90-degree angles. Okay? Now, when we have right triangles, which is what we have here now, we can use HL, but this is the hypotenuse, neither of these are. So we can't use HL, we're going to have to prove this another way. So I need to show that these angles are congruent, so we're not done. Um, oh yeah, the reason for number three, that's the definition of perpendicular. How do we know that those are equal to 90 degrees? Because that's what it means to have perpendicular segments. Now, if they're both equal to 90 degrees, both of these angles are equal to 90 degrees, then they have to both be equal to each other. That is what we call substitution or the transitive property. And so now we've said that these two angles are congruent. There's our angle, and we can now make a statement of congruency of the triangles. Triangle NMP is congruent with triangle HRP. The reason side, angle, side, side, angle, side. SAS is our reason main points of this is what happens when there's a midpoint congruent segments what happens when there's congruent or sorry perpendicular segments they're both equal to 90 degrees they're equal to each other all right uh, let's see what happens on the next one we have this hourglass shape and it tells us that the two segments here tw and R, uh, pr bisect each other we're going to try to show that this triangle on top is congruent with the triangle on the bottom Okay, see where this leads us. Well, all it tells us is that we have um, bisectors, but what does it mean to have segment bisectors? It's different than an angle bisector. Segment bisectors create midpoints. So the point where these two uh, segments intersect in is the midpoint of each of these segments as a result. That's the definition of a segment bisector. Okay. Now, just like above, what does it mean to have a midpoint? Well, that means we have congruent segments. If we have congruent segments, we better mark them. Okay, ooh, look, we have two sides of our two triangles. And the reason for that, that's the definition of a midpoint. Now, we got two pieces of the puzzle. We need one more. Nothing else was given. What does the diagram give us? Ooh, yeah, look, vertical angles right there. Um, measure of angle T, or sorry, uh, angle TNP is congruent with angle WNP. That's the vertical angle theorem. So now we can say that the two triangles are congruent because we have the three pieces we need, side, angle, side. Um, please mark your diagrams. It helps you to see, and it helps me to know that you know what you're talking about. All right, let's keep rolling. Exact same diagram. Totally different given. What changes? Well, okay, we got parallel segments, and those two segments are congruent. Well, that's a side of the two triangles we're trying to show as congruent, so let's mark that as such. 
what does it mean to have parallel lines? Oh yeah, that was the given. Well, that means that we have alternate interior angles that are congruent. Um, it could mean other things to have parallel lines, but when you have a diagram like this with parallel lines, it means that alternate interior angles are congruent. So there's two angles right there. And on the triangle, I got an angle, a side on an angle. I got an angle, occluded side on an angle. Looks to me like we got congruent triangles. ASA, angle side angle. Um, remember, now that we've established that these triangles are congruent, now we can state that any part, uh, any corresponding parts of these triangles, uh, TN is congruent with W, uh, WN as segments, um, NP, segment NP is congruent with NR, and all of the pieces, all six pieces of the triangles are now congruent with each other. C, P, C, T, C. We'll do that later. All right, uh, next diagram um, is about an angle bisector, and uh, what's going to happen here is in our given, we have that, oh, check that out. We got AC is congruent with BC. That's the side of the triangle, A ADC and BDC, that we're trying to show is congruent here. Great, we're a third of the way there. What else was given? DC bisects, segment DC bisects angle ACB. Um, we had, there's our given. What does it mean to have a segment, an angle bisector? That means that we have congruent angles. Segment bisectors create midpoints, angle bisectors create um, congruent angles. It skips the midpoint because there's no midpoint. Um, so what this meant up here in the blue is that we have congruent angles. We got a side and an angle, a side and an angle. We just need one more side. Oh look, DC is congruent with itself. That's a reflexive property. Looks to me like we got the three pieces that we need, a side, an angle, and a side. We have congruent triangles. The key to this, angle bisectors create congruent angles, and then of course the reflexive shared side, uh, DC, is in both of those triangles. All right, um, this fifth one here is probably, well, the one you need to pay the most attention to. Um, let's talk about it. First of all, we have triangles that are overlapping. A, B, F overlaps with angle with triangle E, G, D. So when you have overlapping triangles, draw them uh, separately so that we can. It, it makes it a lot easier to keep up with it until you become an expert and you are not yet. Redraw them. So angle uh, the given tells us the angle E is congruent to angle A. I'm going to mark that everywhere there's an a and an E. I'm going to mark those as congruent. Of course, that's in, in the, my little ones that I drew as well. It also tells us that D is congruent with B. Great. That's another angle. So, wow. All, we Already, we got two angles that are congruent. Um, sounds to me like we need a side somewhere. Um, also, the given tells us the AG is congruent with FE. So, everywhere where there's an AG and an FE, let's mark them. A, G, F, E, A, G, and F, E. Like, I hope you are seeing here what we've got to do. We've got to show that A, F is congruent with G, E. That those two sides, that A, F is congruent with G, E. So this G, F, which is shared, G, F is in both of these triangles, is what we are going to have to add to A, G, and F, E to uh, make congruent sides. This one requires a little bit of work uh, requires some steps. First of all, we have to state that GF is congruent with itself. That's the reflexive piece of it. Now, even though we've marked over here that we have everything is congruent, we still have to say that AF is congruent with GE. Uh, we don't have what we need yet to do it. We first need to say that, all right, if these things are equal and these things are equal, when we add them together, we get more equal things. Do you remember what that's called? I hope you remember that's called addition, the addition property of equality. Okay? So because these are equal and these are equal, we can add them together and get a new equal statement. I still haven't said AF or GE yet. Well, that's what's going to come next. What does AG plus GF 
equal and FE plus GF equal. AG plus GF equals segment AF. Segment FE plus segment GF equals segment GE. There they finally exist. That was the segment addition postulate that created uh, these two smaller segments, created the bigger segment, that's segment addition. Now, AG plus GF is equal to FE plus GF. That's, that's what line three is all about. So if these are equal, and these are equal to new things, then they're equal as well. That is called substitution. And now we have our side. Um, AF is congruent with GE. So uh, angle, angle, side is our reason. Um, we got angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. Now, so in order to accomplish this, this is a four-step process. We had to have this, that this is equal, reflexive addition, segment addition, substitution. This is a set of tools that you're going to have to, uh, well, it's just, it's a pattern that you have to know. Okay, one more. Um, we've got overlapping triangles again to show that these are congruent. Uh, triangles ABC and uh, DCB. Um, the given tells us we've got right angles. Sweet. Okay. Um, it also gives us a congruent side. Awesome. Turns out I don't need that the E of, of that, but um, so that we have that, that side over there. It's, it's worth noting that that's a hypotenuse of our triangle. Um, remember, when we redraw these, it goes with this. BC is a um, common side. It's a shared side, so BC is equal to itself. This BC is equal to this BC. They are congruent. We have a side and a side. We have a right angle that's congruent. Um, it just so happens that this is the hypotenuse, and that is a leg. Guess what? We got congruent triangles. Right triangle, hypotenuse leg, HL. All right, um, you're going to see these patterns over and over again, and I hope this can help you to uh, see how it will all work. Okay, get some rest. Love you, bye.